Thank you, Jesus. Shall we ask him to speak to us tonight as individuals? Jesus, I want to hear from you tonight. Speak to my heart today. Open a new chapter to my life by your word today. Take all the praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We are seated at your feet, waiting to receive from you the keys to operate in the supernatural. Jesus, let no one return without a proof. Amen. Let this key be feasibly delivered into everyone's hand Amen. and take all the praise in Jesus' precious name. I have dominion and I take dominion. Congratulations. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please you may be comfortably seated. The supernatural is one of those virtues that validate redemption. Jesus said, if I do not the works of my father, believe me not. That simply implies that operating the supernatural is one of the credentials of new birth. Remember in John chapter 3 and verse 8. The wind blows where it's listed to hear the sound thereof, but can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going. And so is everyone. Not some special people, not some apostles and prophets. And so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The reason we lose the battles of life is that we just suddenly disconnect with the reality of our spirituality. Well, everyone is going through it. That's my share. I'm not the first one to suffer this kind of sickness. Even anointed men and women of God suffers it. There is nothing strange about being uh, a failure. I mean, uh, uh, it's one thing that people experience in life. So, and then you have people say, as a human being, what can I do? He has forgotten his identity, he's lost it. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. John 3 6. Now, simple question Do spirits get sick? Do spirits experience failure? God is a spirit. And they that worship us worship him in spirit and in truth. So, new birth brings you into the class of God. In moving to what others suffer in the world, we need that mentality. If we don't, we'll be engaging in trial by error in the battles of life. We need the mentality of supernaturality that you are no longer just a human being after you are born again. You have become a spirit being. A spirit being. And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So you are born again an overcomer. You are born again an overcomer. You are not ordained to be overcome by what overcomes others. You are born again an overcomer in the world. Therefore, the last defeat you suffer in the battles of life is the last you will ever know in your life. Yeah. And what makes you an overcomer? Whatever it tells you to do, do it. He will launch you like a rocket into the overcomer's realm of life. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Faith 
is believe in God and prove that you do by obeying him. Show me your faith without your works and I'll show you my faith by my works. It is natural to go to town and buy wine when wine is finished in a marriage and if you have money or you have somewhere to borrow, you go and buy. They say, whatever I tell you to do, do it. And so, fill the water pot with water. And suddenly they emerge over commas in the face of shame and reproach by doing whatsoever he commanded them to do. Faith is not just believing God, but obeying God to prove that to believe him. They were not confessing the pot is filled with wine. No, they went and filled the water pot with water as commanded. And the water was turned to wine without any gyration, without any prayer, any praying the spirit, praying in understanding. Simple obedience turned them to overcomers in the face of shame and reproach. Simple obedience, simple obedience. So we overcome by faith, and not just the faith of believing God, but the faith of obeying God that we believe in, to prove that we believe in. Obeying God to prove that we believe in. This is very important. Any kind of faith that lacks obedience is fake. Any kind of faith that lacks obedience is fake. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without work is dead also. It is what we do that validates whatever we claim to believe. Now, they that turn men to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. So what to do is not pray to shine as the star is obeying God by going ahead again and again, turning many more and many more and many more to righteousness, and then suddenly your star rises. And then suddenly your star rises. This is so important. You are tired of shame and reproach around your life. He said, look, Mark chapter 8 and verse 38. Who serves are ashamed of me and of my word? In this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels. So, you want to be free from shame? Go outside the gate bearing the shame of Jesus. Mama Jesu, now we don't know, uh, you don't suffer, you never suffer enough. So often it's just beginning. Instead of going to face your market, you are saying, accept Jesus. You are outside the gate bearing his reproach so that he can wipe away the reproach of your life. So he can wipe away the reproach of your life. You may never meet any shining star in the kingdom of God who is ashamed of Jesus. You never. They asked someone out there, they said in an interview, what is your best book? What is the best book that you have read or something? And he said, The Secrets of Success by Bishop David W. He said, yeah, that's it. <laughs> they gave him the job on the plant of gold. They asked somebody else, what have you done in the last three months as a contribution to human society? He said, I led eight souls to Christ. Eh? In an interview, they said, can you name them? And he named them one by one without opening any book. Can you give, them, give us their contact? They gave them the number one by one. And they called one of them in that interview. They said, do you know so-and-so person? He said, yes. How do you know him? He led me to Christ. Now, a medical postgraduate scholarship interview. They gave him and the wife that is here to marry, the children is here to have. They gave all of them scholarship. Whether you now have who you will marry or not, whether you have children or not, you and two of your children on permanent scholarship, just go. And so he went abroad. 
is not ashamed of Christ. Now, what have you done? Yes, I was visiting, uh, uh, you know, visiting orphanages. He said, I led people to Christ. They asked someone in an interview, how do you want to advance the marketing of this organization? He said, as we did in Operation 615 in my church. <laughs> and they gave him the job. And they started the Operation 615 by printing envies in that company. He's not ashamed of Christ. Someone said, you go to church? Yes, one, once a while. Which church do you go? Many churches. <laughs> He's ashamed of Jesus. So he continues to wriggle with shame. This fellow came out boldly for Jesus in most unlikely circumstances and they were decorated in return. If you put 50 machine guns in front of me and 300 behind, you say, uh, who is Lord? Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. If you say, I want more time to fire, fire forever. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the one who wants to save your soul. You want to be free from shame? Let us go outside the gate, bearing his reproach with all excitement and delight. That's how I've been privileged to live my life. What to say is irrelevant. This is your opinion is allowed, and nobody should fight you on it. Amen. This man is a stupid man. That's an opinion. And each one has a right for it. They said to Jesus, You have the devil. He didn't reply to them. He just continued. They say, You have the place of devils inside you. He did as if he didn't know. He just kept on with his message. Let us go outside the gate. Be honest. Most of you are too, you are too corporate. For the triumph that God has reserved for you. You are too corporate. You are, you are too egalitarian. You know what I mean? You're, you're, okay, well, can I, you know, I think somebody should talk to Papa. What is he doing in the market? <laughs> well, look for me in the market. Look for me in the mechanic workshop. Look for me in Tipa's uh, garage. Look for me in rice market. Look for me under the bridge. That's where my friends are. Jesus is looking for them, and I'm looking for them. Can I tell you this? Your future is great. <laughs> so don't sit down there in church and then wear tie, wear coat, and then you know wave your hand. I have dominion. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> That's how those who walk in dominion work. Anything God says to do is the delight of their soul. Anything, no matter how you feel, no matter how you think. Jesus told me to lay down before him here, 2002, October 21, at the gate of Covenant University. With a brand new shirt and a powerful suit. <laughs> and we have just danced around to the runabout. Everybody's sweating. And Jesus said, hand it over to me. And I said, how? He said, lay down before me on this floor. And I will take over. So I removed my coat and lay before him. See how covenant is flying. See, just see how covenant is flying. You, you, I mean, universities founded 500 years are behind covenant university. The ones founded 800 years are behind covenant. How? how? Simple, raw obedience that don't make for any dignity, you know. How can the uh, chancellor be lying down on the floor when he's not mad? And then the students are waiting, the, uh, their parents are waiting. Won't they take the children away? That This madman. <laughs> Won't you be making our children to lie down on the floor? <laughs> you can't take your children away. Don't take God away. Don't take God away. Don't take God away. Don't take God away. Raw obedience and so from that date forever, there was no pressure in running the university. There was no looking for students to enroll. We were selecting and selecting. There was no financial hitch of any kind. You need anything. We have excess of it. Why? Lay down before me and I will take over. Now, the next two and a half weeks, go all out and by all means, and get so sin and watch what I will do with your life. I will remove the struggles of your life. 
and put you on a flight frequency. While others are struggling, you are soaring. By simple obedience. By simple obedience. I felt some terrible heat from the ground. My understanding opened up on what the teachers taught when we were in secondary school, conventional heat. I experienced conventional heat. So there's no way I can forget it. If I'm teaching geography, I will remember conventional heat. The last heat I ever felt, and the church ever felt, setting up Covenant University. You can't tell how powerful obedience is in redefining your destiny. You can't tell how powerful obedience is. Not just, uh, you know, they give you a flyer, you put it in your house. Many people have all the flyers since um, one that the world put, agenda began. If you call one, they say, I have the flyer. Call another one. 2016, Operation Go Around, I have the flyer. <laughs> <laughs> he kept it all in his house. <laughs> they are to be given out. Somebody was to be rescued from death. The person has died. He kept it in his house. Don't give it to people again in church. Let them take at the gate as they are going. Not everybody needs it. Ushers, don't give it to anybody again in church. Don't. And you will discover that if Sunday, many will be passing by without taking because the one you give them is wasted. Don't give them. Let them take. Then you become accountable. Like tonight now, don't give anybody. Be at the gate. As they are going, you need? I don't. Go. You <laughs> need? Yes, simple. Life. <laughs> Amen. All the ones who are insulting us, I don't know where they are. God knows where they are. But uh, I didn't feel the insult. I was enjoying the obedience. They were insulting. I enjoyed their insulting. I was enjoying my obedience. And each one found himself wherever he found himself. Please wake up. Wake up. Let's look at two forces tonight and then we'll be closing. You know, everything in the kingdom of praise by keys. I give to you the keys of the kingdom of God. So we have the key for operating, the keys for operating in the supernatural. So tonight, let's look at two of these keys. And the first one we're looking at is the key of being on the go for Christ. Everybody on the go for Christ is empowered to command the supernatural. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whosoever believes not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe in this commission. In my name, they shall cast out devils. So when you are on the go for Jesus, you are holding in your hand the key for commanding the supernatural. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And God also confirmed that he has empowered them, confirmed the word that they speak or preach with signs following. We are not empowered to sit. We are empowered to serve. And you cannot be empowered more than you are willing to serve. We are not empowered to sit down and occupy a very high seat and a high position. You have all the alphabets, 26 of them, behind your name. This is high chief. Udo. And then you now arrange all the alphabets behind them. A, B, C, Nigeria. CDO. <laughs> you, hey, two, you can't command anything but those letters. <laughs> you are empowered to serve. Understand that neither can anyone be more empowered than is how to serve. Everybody on the go for Christ is empowered to command the supernatural. Matthew 10 and verse 1. Matthew 10, 1. He said, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirit 
to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Everyone on the go for Christ is empowered to command the supernatural. Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. The Bible said, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and what? Authority over all devils and to kill diseases. And verse 6. And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Just by simple obedience of stepping out in line with his commanded, go ye to all the world. Many, many years ago, we were out on an outreach into a, a town and then a madman got delivered from that uh, crusade and brought him to the camp where we were camping. And then that devil came back on him the following day. He became very wild. Everyone that had muscle was holding him down. And so they come and they say, we had a big problem here. So I went there and I said, where's the big problem? They said, leave him. Yeah. He couldn't move one inch. And I shot at him a verse of scriptures from the book of Jude. The angels that left their forces and kept not their habitation, they are now reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, the judgment of the great day. What are you doing here? Huh. All the demons left one more. You, you are empowered with authority. You are not going to try. You are given authority over all devils. All devils left him instanta. You want to see the raw manifestation of the miraculous? Get on the go for Jesus and go with the conscience of a man under authority. Go with the conscience of a woman under authority. You are not begging. It's a part and parcel of the package that as you go, be conscious of the fact that I've empowered you and given you authority over all devils to cast them out and to cure all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. That is where the church is missing it. There are too many sedan tight people in church, bench warming people, don't take a step. And nobody goes forward sitting down, you go forward taking steps. When you begin to take steps of obedience, you begin to grow in power and authority. You begin to grow in power and authority. You begin to grow in power. Now, I don't have to say Satan get out. When I step in, Satan gets out on his own. He's, he's wise enough. When I get into any situation, he steps out automatically. There is no, excuse me, why? There is no why. As I step in, you step out. And so we were in Liberia and this notorious witch called the uh, Queen of Sheba, who does divination for most leaders around the continent. They sacrifice human beings to this terrible devil. And so she got to town, pumps and pigeonry, big thing, demonic drums. And uh, we had no idea. No idea. So nobody prayed for or against her. As we stepped to the hotel where she lodged, the devil stepped out. Otto fled the city without any announcement. Disappeared into the thin air. Authority. Authority. Everything tormenting you, you never see them anymore in your life. <laughs> so, what you do between now and August 4th is vital in establishing your new level of spiritual authority. Don't sit and they are praying, oh God, give me more authority. No, the one I gave you, I have not used it. And if you are not careful, I take that small one from you. No, you, you have to obey him to endear yourself to him. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. So, the opportunities for imagining a star in the kingdom is open ended. As long as there are people yet to be saved, you have the opportunity to imagine a star. 
and they that turn many to righteousness shall emerge as the stars forever and ever. Opportunity to reign in life is open-ended. Remember? By wisdom, kings reign and prisons decree justice. And he that winner souls is wise. Proverbs 11, 30. So, by the wisdom of soul winning, we begin to reign in life with Christ. Glory to God. We begin to reign in life with Christ. We begin to reign in life with Christ. One of us was coming in from the east in um, uh, these luxurious buses and armed robbers took over this, the highway in Shagamo with their chest open. Come now! And there was this radio cassette or something playing in that bus. And I was the one preaching. The demon went inside. <laughs> Who is speaking? He said, please, come in. Carry your trouble, go. <laughs> he asked them to come. He couldn't rob one person there. They laid down on that people. The sun. The sun. The sun. Eh? They said, everybody come in, carry your trouble, go. Now this man, they speak. <laughs> everybody come in, carry your trouble, go. Wherever your sun is hard, demons will bow. <laughs> That's where you are going. Not that you are crying, demon, leave me, demon, leave me. You you should have left that place long time. They won't leave you. They won't leave you. Huh? A child can be saying, "These ants, leave me now. Leave me now." But when a man is saying, "You know he has problem," if a man, you don't say ants leave me. You clean it. You kill it in one swing by the bomb of your hand. <laughs> Amen. You have stayed around that man long enough. Oh, this, oh God, don't let me die. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God said, okay, my, for, you are now, you have been here for five years. Five. Five solid years. Under this heated anointing. You are now begging me as if I'm a wicked man. What kind of person are you? You know, if all you do is to believe God, you have not left the realm where Satan operates. He said, even Satan believes and he shivers. It is obedience that makes your faith valuable. Satan believes that the God is almighty. He believes. He believes. You know, Jesus was going, hey, have you come to the cell before the time? He believes. But he does not obey. Well, the truth is, God has ordained your emergence as a star. It's the obedience that will take you there. I said, God has ordained your emergence as a star, but it's your obedience that will get you there. Very quickly, the key of spiritual maturity. And here, differs nothing from a servant as long as a child. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all things. Why he has no capacity to take command. But it's under governors and tutors until the time appointed of the Father. Though he be Lord over all things, but it's not different from a servant because of spiritual immaturity. Spiritual immaturity. Spiritual immaturity. Remember, unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon the shoulder of the son, not the child. The government shall be upon the shoulder of the son and not the child. And his name shall be called Wonderful and Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So we have to develop into sonship. To gain true command of the supernatural. Authority is not vested in children. It's vested in sons. But spirituality is not about age. 
But about spiritual understanding and depth. Spiritual understanding and depth. He said, I said they should speak. Job, Job 32, verse 7 and 8. A multitude of years should teach wisdom. But I couldn't find it. But there's a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty give them understanding. So it's not about age, it's not about multitude of years. It's about spiritual understanding, spiritual depth. Rich experience with God. David was 17 when he rescued the whole of Israel from shame and reproach. He had rich experiences with God. He had in-depth understanding of God. When he was approaching Goliath, all that he had was God. God will deliver me from the lion, not my expertise. He will bring down you empty barrier today. And he brought him down. Spiritual maturity is a requirement for commanding the spirit, supernatural. Spiritual maturity. Now, now, this is so important. In 1970, I was studying and I saw that it's good for a young man that he bears his yoke in his youth. Lamentation 3.27. There was no yoke on my life. There was nothing. So <laughs> I went and knelt and I said, Jesus, every yoke I will need to bear when I'm old, let me bear it now that I'm young. Because you say it is a good thing. Now, that is, you are developing your work with God. And it doesn't have to be when you are old. It's as you see those things that God shows you and how you respond to them. So how do we experience accelerated maturity? Keep exercising yourself in aligning with the commandment of scriptures. Nobody excels in the field of sports without rigorous, relevant exercises. Rigorous and relevant exercises. The outcome of every sportsman is a function of the quality of exercises he engages with. The quality of exercises. If you just leave it to talent, you'll never be a prize winner. All the others are talented, but they're exercising themselves to give value to their talent. Exercising yourself towards the light sum of in the light some obedience to every commandment of scriptures and you stay in it <clears throat> you keep doing it you are developing spiritual muscles bit by bit you become a local captain of a football team and then bit by bit you became captain of the football team in your secondary school Bit by bit, you go to the university, you become captain of your football team or a major player there, a notable player there, the one they are waiting for when they are going for any match. And then suddenly, this foolish boy is always going about playing football. Suddenly, Klaus began to haunt him. And then they gave him a contract in Italy. We had to spend all their money in sports. Give him $12 million per annum. And he's still speaking grammar. No, 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 I'm not satisfied. Huh? No, I, I might have to leave you after this season. Hey, please don't leave. Make it 15. Are you following? Now, through rigorous exercises, he has found his place in the range of the tops in his field. That's the way it works in the kingdom. David saw the lion on the bear. He said, no, God won't run away from you. I won't run away from you. You are too small to catch my father's sheep. Amen. In the name of the God of Abraham and Jacob, he took him by the way. 
Thank you, God. Amen. And that was an experience. Amen. It was a fast forwarding of his maturity. And so the way it displayed before Goliath. You don't sit down there for an experience. You get out there to have one. You get out there to have one. You don't sit down for an experience. You get out there to have one. I saw someone who has never been to church for 25 years. He's an excited member of this church today. Has done business here, CC. Any C you have, he will do it. Yet he never stepped into any church building for 25 years. You go out there to experience it. Somebody was in drug business and drug addiction, and for 22 years, tension, temperature, pressure in that home, hell on earth. But one touch, he woke up one morning and said, Now we are going to church today, everybody. Eh? He said, go see. I, I met Papa. He said, I should come to, to the, All of us are going. All of you. Dress up and come. <laughs> Carry the whole family here. Everybody got saved. They are excited members of this church today. And when we go out teaching the area, they are there always helping out to be sure that things are in order. You can't sit at home and be programming that experience. You get out there to establish it. Get out there to see it. That's how to accelerate our maturity through covenant exercises on the revelation of the truth at your disposal. You are just doing it and enjoying it and heaven is opening up for you. That's the way out. So maturity comes by applying ourselves to the world, exercising our conscience to always do what is right and then exercising ourselves in raw obedience to every commandment of scriptures. That's how it happens. Spiritual understanding will make a man out of a child. Any day, any time. We talk about the man child. And Jesus is that man child. And as the father sent him, so as he sent us, so you can become a man as a child. You can become a man as a child. Revelation 12. And the woman that gave birth to the man child was persecuted by the devil. Amen. And it was referring to Jesus. She brought forth a man child, Mary, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. A picture of Jesus. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there are a thousand and two hundred and three score days. And the devil pursued after the woman, but God helped her. What I'm bringing out here is the man child concept. You know, in chapter 11 of Isaiah and verse 3, he shall make him a quick understanding. And he's talking about Jesus in the fear of the Lord. And you get in verse 6, and a child shall lead them. So you don't need to be old. As your understanding opens, your, spirit, your maturity is being accelerated. And then you begin to command authority. Can I hear you loud? Yes, amen. You will not be left behind. Raise your right hand to heaven. And give God thanks for the privilege to be on this platform where God is accelerating the maturity of his people. Give God thanks. For the key of being on the go that's now in your hand as individuals, celebrate him. Magnify him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. You are here this evening, you want to turn your life over to Jesus and have a brand new beginning and be in grace to command the supernatural in this troubled world. And more importantly, to make heaven at the end of your journey. <clears throat> Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. You want to turn your life over to Christ tonight? You want your sins forgiven? You want your name written in the book of life? Please stand to your feet. God bless you as you stand. God bless you.
You want to be born again? Please stand. God bless you out there. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you this evening. And you will be saved. You'll be born again. you have a brand new beginning. God bless you as you do. That applies to all of us who are here at the youth chapel. And those of us who are there at the various Zona Fellowship Centers. Please stand to your feet and I'll be praying with you in a moment. There are also people here tonight that need to rededicate their life to Christ. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Please stand to your feet. You want to reconnect back to God? Please stand to your feet. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you in a moment. And Jesus will turn your life around. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else is standing up wherever you are. Get up now. Get up now. He will save your soul. He will establish your stand with him. He will grant you a brand new beginning. And God, God bless you as you do. Now, everybody standing up in the first and second call, please make your way out there to the front. <coughs> and I'll be praying for you. Secondly, all of us in the video centers, please move towards the altar. The pastors are there waiting. We are going to be praying at the same time. And Jesus will save your soul, restore you back to the faith, grant you a brand new beginning, and you'll be glad you did tonight. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming.